Hi, my name is Janet and this is my cat Cece. Say hi Cece. And we're going to show you really um, how simple it is to test your cat's blood sugar in her ear. So if you have a diabetic cat, um, I know it's really, really kind of overwhelming when you first get that diagnosis and the thought of um, sticking, sticking a little needle in their ear every day, several times a day, seems really overwhelming and, and um, intimidating, especially in addition to the shots. But I just want to show you that it's really no big deal and um, it doesn't hurt the cat at all and you're keeping your cat really, really safe by doing that. So first I want to show you what's in my testing kit. This is my, my testing kit that I keep and it's got my meter and all the supplies that I need for testing my cat CC, so I'm gonna show you that first. Okay, so these are the Lancets that I use. They are really cheap. I buy them at um, online for about $1.19 for 100 of them, so you really can't beat that price. You don't need the Lancet device at all, just, just the, the Lancets are fine. Some of the meters will come with a device, and I find that the cats really think that the clicking noise um, is unpleasant, so I would just skip the device altogether. Plus, you can be a lot more accurate with where you um, do the poke so that you don't hit the vein by mistake. Some vets tell you to hit the vein. The vein runs like really close to the edge. It's sort of like right around here. Um, you don't want to do that actually because it hurts the cat more and it bleeds way more than, than you really need. So and if I kind of hold it up to the light, you can see that little vein in there. Yeah, you don't really need to poke that. So I'm gonna show you how to, where to do the poking too. Um, so let me show you what else is inside my kit. Let me do this with one hand, that'd be great. There we go. So I use an alpha track meter, which is a, a pet meter. A lot of people use human meters and that's fine too. Human meters run a little bit differently. They run a little higher. Um, I'm sorry, a little lower than pet meters. Um, but either one will tell you if your cat's high or low. So in here I keep all my little lancets. In here I've got a couple of little cotton rounds, as you can see. And then my meter and the test strips. So the test strip bottle, if it's the um, if you're using the Alpha Track, the test strips have a little code on them. One's for a cat, one's for a dog. So make sure that you code your meter first. Each vial may be different. So mine is already coded. I'm take out my meter and I also have in here some neosporin ointment because especially when you're testing several times a day the neosporin uh, the neosporin ointment with pain relief will just um, make them feel a little bit better and help the ear heal up okay so here we go that's what's inside my kit so I'm going to go ahead and pop this open and pull out a strip kind of awkward doing this with one hand but that's okay so what I do is I stick the testing strip inside of my meter without pushing it all the way in. When you push it all the way in, it starts the countdown and you've only got like 30 seconds or something or 60 seconds to get your sample. So I wait. You can see like if I push it all the way and see how it starts up. Um, but I'm not going to start it up yet. So I'm going to pull it out. I wait until I actually have a drop starting to form so that I don't feel rushed. So let me get one of these little doodahs. This is the Lancet. You want to get a 28 gauge or 26 gauge. Um, if you get a humor meter, sometimes they'll come with 31 gauge and they're a little bit smaller. The bigger the number, the smaller the, the point. So the, sm the bigger points are actually better, especially when you're first starting, so that you can get a drop a little bit easier. So let me just uh, pull the little lid off here. Just twist this off, hold on. Hold on, look at a cute cat for a minute while I'm doing this. Hello, cute cat. She heard something downstairs. Okay, so I got the cap twisted off. You can see it's just really, really small little needle. Okay, so now where you want to poke the cat is actually right next to the vein. So like on the outer, <laughs> sorry, see, so on the outer edge of the, the ear, kind of just right along the outside edge right here or here some people even do if, you, if your cat's ear starts getting sore after a while you can do it in here and you can poke from the inside or the outside I generally find it easier to go from the outside but once in a while I do from the inside it's fine um, 
Now, some people are so scared to like not use the device because they think that they're going to um, poke all the way through and it doesn't matter. I've poked through my cat's ear so many times and she doesn't even flinch. So um, it's really not a big deal if you do. So uh, I use the cosmetic round behind her ear and that will protect your fingers from getting poked. So let's, let's try that. I'm gonna try to set up the camera in a way that you can see it so that I can use both hands um, to test my cat so you can see that. So luckily Cece is a pretty chill cat and she's just gonna sit here for me. And um, some people warm up the ear with a rice sock or something beforehand. I don't bother because she's been tested for a while now and so um, she's got all the little capillaries in there already. It doesn't take much to get a blood sample, but if you had trouble, you could always warm up a little sock full of rice in the microwave for a few seconds and just warm it up. I put the cotton pad behind it, give it a quick poke just along the edge. Boop! That's it. Now I'm going to... Okay, totally dropped the camera. Now I'm going to just massage the ear just a little bit. Okay, it's starting to come out, so I'm going to put the meter strip in now, so it'll start to register. Squeeze, squeeze, just massaging it. There's a little dot. That's all you need, seriously. Like, look, it's like the period at the end of a sentence. It's like nothing. Okay, so there's a little black spot on the edge of those test strips. Yeah, little dot. See, 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 see. <laughs> yeah, and um, you just hold that up to the dot. Hold on, hold on. And that's it. I just touched it to the blood drop. And that's it. And now it's going to go through. 121, she's fine. And that's it. And then I take the cotton pad. Give it a little squeezy squeeze. Boop, boop, boop. There you go. See? A little, that's it. A little tiny dot. So that's all there is to it. I hope this video helped take some of the anxiety away about home testing your cat. I wish that my vet had um, pushed it a little bit more when I first had her diagnosed. I didn't start testing until about six weeks after her diagnosis. And then once I started, I was um, a little annoyed that I didn't start from the beginning because I felt like that's when she really started making progress and um, and uh, keeping, her, keeping her safe um, became such a, a relief because I felt a lot more in control. You'll feel a lot more empowered um, that you can help your cat stay safe and healthy and to really um, know when a dose is too much or too little. I want to say that in the beginning, sometimes you need to poke more than one time in the same spot to get the little tiny drop of blood. But after a week or two, the, um, the drop comes much, much easier because they start to grow little capillaries in there. So um, even if at first it seems like this is impossible, I promise you it is going to be so much easier very quickly. Um, so good luck to you and good luck to your cat and um, happy testing. I'm glad that you're, you're going to test because it really is so, so important. Bye.